I recently joined a special and wonderful tribe of human beings. These human beings have embarked on one of the most challenging, one of the most fulfilling paths anyone can take on this planet, more so in Africa. This tribe is in every city and every country in Africa. This tribe is fierce, it's driven, it's passionate, it's hopeful, it's full of love and energy, and it has its eye on the truth of Africa. This tribe has a little bit of a chip on its shoulder. This tribe has potent weapons of an assorted type to help us through the difficult tasks ahead. This tribe is the African creative and cultural class, my tribe. Steve Jobs once said that the most powerful person in the world is the storyteller, because it's the storyteller that sets the vision, the values, the agenda for an entire generation that is to come. I agree with that. In fact, I agree so much that I have evolved that statement to say this. The creative entrepreneur, the cultural entrepreneur, the storyteller is the most important person in Africa. Let me make my case in three simple points. One, the storyteller, the creative and cultural entrepreneur is the one person who can export Africa authentically to the world. Many of you may have heard of the famous author, Tuna Achebe. He wrote an evergreen novel called Things Fall Apart. And in that novel, he captured the African experience. He exported that to the world where it has been consumed and analyzed by millions. His was a visceral portrayal of the Igbo culture in Nigeria and its clash with another culture. Two, the storyteller, the creative and the cultural entrepreneur is the one person who can craft Africa's story viscerally, emotionally, and imaginatively to the world. Usman Sembene is a Senegalese film director, and he has created cinematic masterpieces that capture the rawness and the realness of Africa. He has confronted tough issues like colonialism, like corruption, and leadership hypocrisy. My third point, the storyteller, the creative and cultural entrepreneur is the one person who can project and protect Africa's soft power on the global stage. Look at the Rwanda Collective. This is an amazing, dynamic, very talented group of fashion designers. And they are taking the message from Rwanda to the world they give young people, young creatives, opportunities and jobs. And in so doing, they lift the country and the narrative up with them. Make no mistake, these are the people that are doing the difficult work of burnishing Africa's narrative on the global stage. We are many. The creative entrepreneur is the most important person in Africa, I say. But when we do not give them the power, the megaphone, the reinforcements to do their jobs, to tell their stories, we end up with a narrative that is familiar, I'm sure, to many of you here and many more around the world. We end up with the sustained drumbeat of safaris, of poverty, of war, of conflict, disease, corruption, animals, and dancers. When I was 24 years old, I landed a dream job. 
I worked for CNN, and I moved from Nairobi to Atlanta. I anchored and reported for 14 years, and I traveled the whole world. I met heads of state, celebrities, ordinary people, and all of them would open up and share their personal stories and their life's journeys with me. In all my travels, I observed so many similarities in all of these countries I went to, to Africa. The people, their incredible narratives they wanted to share. Each time I went home to Nairobi, I would observe a massive transformation was happening. A new energy, a hustle, a bustle, fantastic stories of people that when I went back to the anchor desk, I realized were not reflected or mirrored to the rest of the world. I saw this when I traveled to other cities like Lagos, Dar es Salaam, Kigali, Addis Ababa, and Accra. I found myself answering this question a lot. Why did you leave a cushy job at CNN to become a struggling entrepreneur focused on Africa? Actually, I wake up in a cold sweat to that most nights. <laughs> and I'm not joking. Okay, so this is the truth. My career was astronomical over the, over the, the 10, 12 years I was at CNN. Toward the end, I felt that I'd kind of flatlined, you know? It was my experiences were more uh, mundane. I was coasting a little bit. And to be honest, I wasn't happy in my personal life. And I didn't really feel that I had a true sense of myself. Now, at the same time, I started fielding requests for media and communications and PR proposals from government leaders and private leaders. And they were looking for ways to position their organizations or their countries to the world. Basically, they wanted to tell their stories, and they wanted to tell them well. So I started asking myself, I challenged myself to answer these nagging questions. Okay, well, where are the stories? Why are they so hard to find? Why are they not of great quality? And why are they still not being told in the perspectives and the voices of Africans themselves. And who's making money anyway, making a living, creating content? Who's getting paid? So I jumped. I decided that I would embark on an entrepreneurial journey, and it has been one of the hardest things I have ever done. In the last three years, I've learned so much I've traveled all across Africa and in the diaspora. And I am telling you, there is so much momentum for people wanting to tell their stories, wanting to own their stories, wanting to tell them well, and to be able to make a living out of telling stories. I've encountered so many people in the creative industries that are frustrated. They are frustrated at the lack of structural support the lack of interest from public and private sector leaders, and they're frustrated by the fact that other markets are offering creators opportunities, but not African storytellers. Let me be clear. If this problem is not addressed, this continent will continue to struggle for respect, for deference, for reverence, like India and China are now starting to receive, and that America and Europe have cultivated for centuries. As long as the creative does not get as much love as the tech guru, the finance entrepreneur, the infrastructure badass, the political wunderkind, Africa will not own its story, period. It was really tough for me to give up the limelight at CNN, but I made my decision and I set my sights to become an enabler, a connector, and an activator for creatives in Africa. I wanted to open paths for young talent. 
I wanted them to tell our own stories. I wanted them to tell them well, to capture the diversity of the continent, to capture the food, the music, the art, the literature, the palette of the entire continent. So I tapped into my relationships and my Rolodex, and I spent all my time and all my money on this. I was so lucky that I found a co-founder who brought the rigor and the balance to this approach, and, he, and a heavy dose of a great sense of humor that keeps us laughing through the really tough times, and they have been tough. We have started a very special company. We have no outside funding, minimal support from the continent, there are no investment arms for creative entrepreneurs, and it has been impossible to get the attention of any backer on the entire continent, even with my profile. The irony for us has been the support that we did receive has been from Western philanthropic organizations and the communications teams of global conglomerates. This has been a powerful introduction to the rough and tumble world of entrepreneurship. It has been a really gritty three years. I've had plenty of rejections, plenty of loud silences, and closed doors something that any entrepreneur will understand and viscerally relate to. Still, we keep pushing forward. It's been invigorating too, energizing to see all the enthusiasm, all the passion that we come across, people that want to tell the African narrative. But the problem is still the problem. It's very tough making a living as a content creator in Africa. There is a significant need for online and offline ecosystems to allow the creative and cultural industries to emerge. Creative and cultural industries are so critical because they create jobs. These are all high growth sectors. Design, film, TV, radio, performing arts, publishing. A country's stories are told via entrepreneurs in these sectors. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence that exists on how when a nation, when people invest in the creative and cultural economies, the economy grows. At the same time, the identities of that country and the narratives they want to tell are exported to the world. Superman, Mickey Mouse, Sound of Music, Star Wars, Vogue magazine, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. All of this is soft power. I have heard so many African billionaires bemoan the negative narratives of Africa. My question to them is how much of your portfolio is creative and cultural? I've listened to heads of state that are very unhappy with the negative portrayals of their country and the continent. They want to see better storytelling. My question to them is how much of your public policy supports creative entrepreneurship in your country and in the continent? The bottom line is this. We have not made it a priority to support the creative. Leaders can go ahead and push the Africa rising narrative all they want, but the story will remain stagnant as long as it is being driven by others and not Africans. The narrative will not change if creators are dismissed as pursuing hobbies. The narrative will not change if creators are not compensated and they're told, well, you can get the exposure. No, they need to get paid. Understandably, there has been more of a focus on the traditional industries like agribusiness, tech, finance, infrastructure, and health, but not so much on the creative and cultural industries. These are just as important, and they are severely overlooked. Not taking creative seriously is the single greatest mistake Africa is making. The talent is extraordinary. 
The potential is just waiting to be unleashed on the world. There is plenty of opportunity in the African creative industry, and this is the time to invest. Premiums are low. This is a high-risk, high-reward play. Fear and complacency are not allowed. Bold, imaginative, and curious. These are the traits that will succeed in the African landscape. The storyteller is the most important person in Africa. The only question that matters now is this. Does Africa care enough, or will we wait once again for the savior from Shanghai, from Silicon Valley, from London, or New York to recognize this before us? Thank you.